Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about ketogenic diet. I know you guys have been hearing about this ketogenic diet everywhere and from everybody. I think it's time to hear from a doctor who actually knows what he's talking about. We are not going to make blank statements, we are going to tell you who is the right person for the keto diet and who is the wrong person for the keto diet and what to watch for. Again, this is Dr. Ahmed Ergin and let's get started. So you guys are watching YouTube videos and everybody talks about keto. Some people put a doctor in front of their name not because they're a real MD, but just they just want to throw out the you know the, the the titles to look more important. Now, guys, remember, not everything you watch is true. Things those general statements you may actually harm yourself quite significantly. Now, I have been getting uh, some hostile comments because people think that I do not support keto. That's not true. I support keto for the right patient. Now, some people say, oh, keto has to be for everybody. Well, that's not true, and we are going to talk today why the keto is not the right diet for everyone and who is the right person for the keto diet. Now, let's briefly discuss about the definition of a ketogenic diet. It is simple. Everybody talks about this. Again, to talk about keto, you don't have to be a doctor. You can be a dietitian. You can be anything. You, you, you don't have to be, you, you can be a car mechanic and talk about keto diet. It's not a rocket science, but who is a good keto patient is where a doctor comes in. I do not recommend anyone to jump into keto diet and uh, without talking to a doctor that, that can have severe consequences that you don't want to have. It's like, you know, let me give you an example about a, from a relationship standpoint. You may see a hot girl or a hot boy. You may say, oh my God, this is going to be my, the love of my life. And you just jump into it. You do everything. You spend all your money. You, you, you spend all your time for that person without really understanding what they're all about, without thinking about the consequences of the relationship, without looking at all the negative aspects of this person. So when you're in love, everything is blind. So if your goal is to just lose weight and get your diabetes under control, your sugars under control, and you do not look at all the other consequences of a diet, then you are going to have problems with it. So it's better to understand what it is and what it's not, and if you are a good candidate for that. Now, of course, I'm going to tell you a lot more detail than you typically see in a keto video from a medical standpoint, but I still do not want you to go ahead and start keto on your own because I don't want you to get into trouble. Again, you don't want to treat yourself. You don't want to doctor yourself. You want to make sure you talk to a doctor. It doesn't have to be us. You can just talk to your primary care doctor or an endocrinologist or a diabetes doctor who has understanding of a keto diet. So how was keto diet found? Actually, initial studies came around for the childhood epilepsy. They found that the, the kids who were not eating a lot of carbs had less epilepsy and did the studies, and they found that the ketogenic diet actually reduces the seizures in, in kids. Uh, also, there has been some studies, short-term studies, that it actually works for diabetic patients, but how long it works and which diabetic patient is the candidate for the keto diet is the question. As you all know, your body turns into fat when you actually eat fat, so that's only fuel that you need to burn. A lot of people will get more energy, they will have mental clearness, although initial transition period may be difficult, you may get a keto flu, you may have electrolyte abnormalities, all these minor things that can happen to even the healthiest person. But the question is, can everybody go on a keto diet? Can, will everybody have symptoms of keto diet? So these are the things we are going to talk about. So a lot of people think that the keto diet works, and I agree with that. Keto diet works, but the question is how long it works, and the question is what happens after a prolonged keto diet, right? So let's talk about this. So you guys all know the, the good side of the keto, right? So you, your blood sugar goes on if you're diabetic, and you start losing weight, uh, and all that good stuff. But what are the things that you really do not know about ketogenic diet? Number one, you may lose a lot of muscle. Now, what happens when you're on a keto diet, guys? Yes, you lose weight, but you feel tired because your muscles run on glucose and primarily glycogen has to be stored in your muscle for you to be able to work out. So if you're a guy or a girl who loves going to the gym, 
you are going to have problems in terms of your performance at the gym. Your muscles will crave for glycogen and the glucose, and your weightlifting, your cardio will suffer through it. Now the problem is, if you trade your exercise for the diet, you're not really doing great for yourself because once you stop exercising, your muscle mass goes down, and that's because you're gonna feel tired on keto diet. So, especially if you're working out. If you're not working out, that's not a problem, but I think you should, everybody should work out. Now, when you work out, your muscles will get weaker, and if you don't use those muscles, use it or lose it. So you're going to have less muscle mass. Now, your overall metabolism is determined by how much muscle you have. That's why guys lose weight a lot easier than the girls, because guys are more muscular. Uh, so, if you have less muscle mass, you're going to, it's going to be a lot easier. So let's say you go on a keto diet, you lose a bunch of weight, and, but you also lost a lot of muscle. So what happens if you come off of keto diet and start eating sugar, then you are going to gain a lot of fat, but you're not going to gain a lot of muscle unless you start working out like crazy. The problem is, once you fall off the wagon and you do not exercise for a while, it is very hard to get back into it. So as a result, I would suggest be very careful about not losing your muscle. And if that's the case, I would suggest eating some carbs right before or after the exercise, at least to keep the exercise going. I would call this a modified diet, and that works for me. I try to be on a low-carb diet, not necessarily keto diet, because when I'm on a keto diet, I just don't feel like working out hard, and I like working out hard. Another major problem with people who go on a keto diet, and sometimes go on a dirty keto diet, right? Uh, they do not understand the whole concept of medicine. So when we treat diabetes, we are not just trying to bring your blood sugars down. That is just maybe one in a 10 goal. But when you don't know about everything, your goal is about, okay, I need to bring my blood sugar down. But that's not everything. When you have diabetes, that is end of the story. It's like you're, you're already insulin resistant, you already have underlying possible cardiovascular disease, your blood sugar goes up at the end of the story. So uh, it's like, you know, after the storm comes over, you're trying to fix things. But the thing is, you really need to pay attention to everything else that goes around diabetes. What are they? cardiovascular disease, heart attacks and strokes. So if you're controlling your blood sugars without reducing your risk of heart attack and stroke, then you're probably going to uh, die young with a wonderful blood sugar. That's not what we want, right? So we wanna bring the blood sugar down along with the risk of cardiovascular disease. Statistically speaking, again, that's, that's numbers. Numbers talk, then numbers are generally right. Two, th or two thirds of diabetics die from heart attack and stroke before they become they go blind, before they become dialysis dependent, or they be before they lose their feet and stuff like that. So your primary goal when you have diabetes is to avoid heart attacks and strokes before you worry about dialysis. So if you go on a keto diet, right, and then you start eating bacon, or red meat, all this animal fat, you are going to have a major problem with your cholesterol. Now, not only that, on keto diet, you're not able to exercise well because your muscle mass, go, muscle mass goes down, your muscle needs glycogen and glucose, so you end up ignoring the exercise part just because you're enjoying the weight loss and all this good stuff, your blood sugar is down, you're enjoying this. But what you don't see, your LDL starts climbing up because of the uh, animal fat you're eating, your HDL, which is the good cholesterol, goes down because you stop exercising. HDL only goes up when you do cardio and enough cardio. It's not just walking the dog and you know going to the park and having a mile or two. Uh, you know the HDL will go up, and that is a very important protective factor from heart attacks. Is that you have to keep exercising. Now, exercising for an hour cardio, for example, is not just going to be easy when you're on a keto diet. So when you're on a keto diet, make sure your doctor monitors your cholesterol and make sure your LDL stays below 100 and your HDL stays above 50, possibly be better if it is above 60. So if you're not paying attention to your LDL, HDL, and even triglycerides, then you're going to have major heart problems or stroke, and that's not what we want, guys. Another problem with keto diet, guys, if you have stage four or stage five kidney disease, 
that is a time you have to be really careful about your protein intake. So the problem is that high protein that you're getting, yes, you're getting more fat, but you're getting also high protein in that diet as well, is going to put stress on your kidneys and you make progressive dialysis more. So as a result, so let's say you're, you're a guy with a kidney function GFR down to 30 or 25, and then you just watch these keto videos, everybody talks so great, and you go on a keto diet, you may find yourself going to dialysis in the next year or two if you are very strict about this keto diet, just because it's been shown that the high protein diet actually kills your kidneys especially if your kidney is already weak. So if you have a perfect kidney function, uh, you're great, you're, not, you're just a new diabetic, that doesn't apply to you. But if you have been diabetic for 15, 20 years and you already have significant kidney disease, you have to be extremely careful. Another thing that happens with the keto diet, it makes you dehydrated. So unless you chunk a gallon or more water every day, along with the electrolytes, you are going to be prone to kidney stones. So if you have a family history of kidney stones, or if you already had a kidney stone, I would approach this very, very carefully, because if you have a kidney stone once, you're going to hate your life. It is worse than childbirth. Every woman says that if they have a kidney stone versus a, <laughs> versus a child delivery, it is horrible. And it can last days, it can come back, on and on and on. So you have to be extremely careful. Now, if you see a doctor, and if you are potentially somewhat high risk for kidney stones, you may go on a potassium citrate, which can actually alkalinize your urine and reduces the risk of developing kidney stones. This actually has been studied in kids with epilepsy. They use a keto diet to reduce the risk of seizures, but they develop more kidney stones. So you have to be extremely careful. Drink a lot of water. If you're insisting on going on a keto diet, you have to drink a lot of water, a lot of electrolytes, and maybe use a potassium citrate as well. Diabetes channel, I'm going to talk about diabetes here. So if you are on insulin or a sulfonylurea agent, such as glipizide, glimepiride, gliburide, uh, Amarul, whatever you name it, they're, they're different brands as well, but most of these are generic. But regardless, if you're on any insulin or a sulfonylurea drug, uh, and if you go on a keto diet and cut the carbs to almost nothing, you are going to have severe low blood sugars. Now, severe low blood sugars can lead to uh, can lead to coma, can lead to accidents, can lead to falls. So you need to really consult with your doctor, with your endocrinologist, preferably or diabetes doctor, to make sure that you are slowly, gradually cutting down on the carbs or making a major cut on your insulin. Now, every time you make a cut on your insulin or your medications, the response may not be like just like what you foresee. So you may you may have still have to be monitored. Now, with good th good thing about sugar and beets, we monitor you guys remotely. So you check your blood sugar, bam, it pops up on my screen. So I know you have a low blood sugar. So I can call you and let you know what's going on. So this kind of close monitoring has to be done for every diabetic patient, not just on keto diet, but I think from being accountable standpoint, I think that's also the greatest way to go. Remote patient monitoring is the key. But again, if you're on an insulin or sulfonylurea agent, make sure you talk to your doctor. Another problem from a metabolism standpoint. Now, it looks very glorious, you lose a bunch of weight on keto diet, right? But the problem is it is so hard to maintain, so you end up losing fat and the muscle, as we discussed, and then suddenly there's a party, suddenly there's some social events, suddenly uh, there's a family gathering, Christmas kicks in, uh, Easter, Ramadan, whatever you're celebrating, and suddenly all this carbohydrates available and everybody's eating, you're like, uh, I cannot eat this, I cannot eat that, they're, they're going to look like you're a little weird guy. So, um, or they may just actually say, oh, you, you, you're such a great willpower and so forth. But regardless of the case, you're going to miss the enjoyment and that can happen occasionally. Now, once you get back into that sneaky carb situation, your body will taste it again and you're going to have cravings again. And the thing is, if you lose... If you lose your willpower and if you get back into carbs, you are going to accumulate so much fat back into your body and that fat will go around your uh, organs. Now, sometimes we call insulin resistant patients skinny fats. So some people are actually very skinny, especially smokers, for example. Uh, they look skinny from a distance, but if you, you know, when they do autopsy studies on these patients, for example, for one or the other reason, 
um, they see that there's a lot of fat around the liver, around the other organs, around the intestines. Body accumulates the fat around your organs, not under your skin, and that is uh, the biggest problem for insulin resistance. So you don't have to look fat from a distance, but you can still be fat inside, and that is a huge problem for insulin resistance. So guys, if you're losing weight, and you don't think you're gonna stick with keto, you're gonna go back to carbs, don't even start the keto diet because you're going to lose muscle and then later you're going to gain all the fat around your organs, which is going to be worse. Now the biggest problem is the uh, keto diet can lead to dehydration. Now, another patient group with diabetes who should not be on keto diet, if, if you're on SGLT2 inhibitors, what are they? Jardians, Farsiga, Invokana, and Stegolatro. These are the four SGLT2 inhibitors in the market. If you're on one of these agents, first of all, these agents can make you prone to diabetic ketoacidosis. And if you put yourself into ketosis, then you're looking for trouble. Another problem is that these agents, they actually work good in a way because they make you urinate blood sugar and you're losing 300 calories on average a day by just using these agents. Uh, but then they also make you dehydrated because every time you urinate glucose, it attracts the water with it. So if you're using this Jardians, Farsiga, Steglatra, or Invokana, you have to stay hydrated. Now, if you're going on a keto diet, that's going to make you dehydrated. Why? Because the carbohydrates actually hold the water. Just like when you urinate carbohydrates or sugar in your urine and you lose water with it, Anytime you cut down on the carbohydrates, your body will lose water. So as a result, initial weight loss that you see, oh my gosh, this is working so great, is actually water. You're not really losing weight in the first couple of weeks. In the first two weeks, you mostly lose water. And the problem is if you do not replace it, you're going to get dehydrated. Again, that increases the risk of kidney stones, that increases the risk of kidney failure. So let's think about this. If you have underlying chronic kidney disease and you become dehydrated, what happens? You will go into acute on top of chronic kidney disease and you're going to lose more kidney function. So you definitely don't want to do that. If you have a chronic kidney disease especially, or if you have other medications or other risk factors that can make you dehydrated, you have to really make sure that you're under care of a doctor who cares about you, who will monitor you closely and will prevent any problem and if there is any problem they have to intervene and make sure you do not go into severe dehydration status so what else happens with dehydration so you're not only losing water with keto diet but you're also losing sodium and potassium now potassium is very very important for your blood pressure so if you're not having enough potassium you have to make sure that you are supplementing potassium it could, be, it could be potassium pills, it could be electrolyte drinks. You have to make sure that you're getting your potassium back in, otherwise your blood pressure may spike. Now, another problem is that you're losing sodium as well. Now, when you lose sodium, you, that's one of the reasons that you feel like keto flu, so, losing sodium and potassium are the two major electrolytes in our body will put you down. So you wanna replace your sodium, but you have to be careful, especially if you have a high blood pressure it is a thin balance there, so like unless you have a gauge in your body, which you don't know, uh, is right? So you're just replacing, but you don't really know how much you're replacing. So that is the problem with the keto diet. So how much potassium should you replace? How much sodium you should replace? You're just making estimations or guesstimations, and the problem is it may not be correct. And if it is not correct, your, your, your blood pressure may spike, or you may not take enough sodium, and that may cause problems in your bones. Now. Sodium is not just important for your overall fluid status, but also it's important for your bones as well. So if you are having chronic sodium loss, that can lead to bone loss. And in diabetics, actually that's a problem because patients with diabetes are more likely to have fractures, so their bones are more fragile. Now, if you lose sodium, then you're actually losing bone as well. So as a result, in the long term, if you stay with keto, yes, your blood sugar may be great, but you're gonna be losing bone down, down the road. So you have to be really careful what you're gaining and what you're losing. So blood sugar control is not everything. You need to control your blood sugars in the right way. I'm not saying go take medications. You don't have to take medications, but you have to know exactly what kind of diet, how much exercise, and we have a lot of videos about these. So one diet will not fit all. Keto diet will work for the healthy diabetics, young diabetics, new diabetics. That's it. 
Anybody who has problems, who have other complications, kidney problems, dehydration problems, medications that can cause low blood sugars, uh, history of kidney stones, all those people should be extremely careful about keto diet. Now, what happens also when your electrolyte balance is off? You will, you will become more irritable, you're going to have balance problems, and you're going to have dehydration problems. Now, you also will be constipated, right? So constipation happens because of dehydration. Again, your bowels needs to absorb some water from your body in order to keep your stool soft and in order to keep you regular. So what happens when you're, when you're dehydrated, you become constipated. And believe me, that's not fun. If you're not going to the restroom for a week, you're going to have major discomfort in, intra-abdominally. So you have to really make sure that you're actually having some non-starchy vegetables and fibers in your diet uh, still so that you can actually keep going. If you are not moving your bowels uh, and if you are having a lot of processed meats, that is the remedy for colon cancer. Yes, you may have wonderful blood sugars, but you may die from colon cancer because you stayed on the keto diet for so long. So again, this is a balance. You have to know if, you have, if you're prone to colon cancer, you have to know your family history, you have to uh, get your screenings done and so forth. Again, that's another reason to make sure that if you're on a keto diet for long term, you have to make sure that your doctor knows about it and you're on top of it. So to avoid problems with electrolyte disturbances, I would still suggest eating healthy vegetables that are high in potassium. That could be broccoli, this could be avocado, uh, flaxseed, chia seed, spinach, uh, could be great sources of potassium and fiber. Uh, so you need to make sure that you are choosing non-starchy vegetables uh, that can be good for your keto diet to avoid problems with lack of fiber and lack of potassium. I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin. I am the founder of SugarMDs.com. We primarily focus on diabetes and diet. Make sure you go to our website at SugarMDs.com and click on Diabetes Education for a lot of educational articles. Now, of course, YouTube video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, give a thumbs up, and make sure you turn the alerts on so you can be notified for the new videos. Also, uh, on the description below, make sure you guys check our Facebook as well and create our group in there so that you can uh, communicate with the fellow diabetics and, and be part of the community.